CC Carpio, and I'm currently living here in Oakland, California. I'm a visual artist, predominantly painting murals and illustrations, but that's majority of my practice. Yes, and I also paint with a collective um, called Trust Your Struggle. So I'm very fortunate to find my kind of local kin to be able to paint with. Um, they're definitely like my brothers and sisters. So we come together, we paint murals together, we do projects together, but we all also individual individually um, take on different projects. I've been very blessed to able to find mentors that um, have definitely shaped and showed me different ways um, to do this craft or to do this practice. Mm -hmm. And being in the Bay Area helped with that, like being able to actually meet some of folks that I look up to um, and them being accessible and available, people like Juan Alicia to Brett Cook, from Eric Spy. I mean, a lot of the people I actually am now doing work with and have done work with. So it's, it's definitely a blessing being here, having access to folks who have paved ways for many of us um, and now being in a place where we're actually doing work together. It's, it's, um, it's an amazing, it's an amazing community that we were able to build. This particular topic was a little bit, in some ways, a little complicated. Um, it took me a while to kind of figure out what the subject or what direction I was gonna go conceptually. Mm -hmm. um, but it's such a potent topic right now. Um, electoral politics is not my favorite politics. I just wanna put it out there first and foremost, mm -hmm. but um, in our current state of the world with this health crisis, with this COVID crisis um, and pandemics and racist pandemics that's happening and now that's impacting um, kind of the whole economy of the nation. Um, and then Oh yeah, there's election that's still coming up. That's still <laughs> happening. We're seeing currently both local and federal government is handling the current situation and, and folks in power um, has a lot of power to kind of determine that how that's going to be handled. And, and, and the only sometimes tools that we have is to actually vote for those people and hopefully, and hope that it counts. But then also not too long ago, we had all this amazing transformation that, that happened in the federal level with amazing um, congresswomen being elected. And so in some ways, you know, being able to see those little victories to know that there are players out there that represents um, the represent values that I think is, is is very important for myself, but also for the many different communities that I'm part of. I'm so used to working with folks on the ground, on the front line. I mean, I'm part of communities mm -hmm. who voting for this issue is not just something that is like a hypothetical situation. It deals directly with the very communities that I'm, I'm part of. And yeah. although it's not necessarily a, a setup or a system that I I, I favor, um, I know that the, it is a platform in which impacts the very community that I'm doing work with and I'm doing work for and that yeah. I'm part of. The, the history of, you know, how women, this is kind of one of the rights that we, we had to fight for super hard um, in, or, in order to be able to be in where we're at and even where we're at it's still very much unequal. Yeah. You know, it's still very much unbalanced. Even though there are, we've made and paved ways um, to be in the place where we're at, voter suppression is still a very real issue. Majority poor black and brown um, communities. Mm -hmm. you, who are the women who at this point still can't use that platform? 
and who can't vote. You know, majority of the women in prison who have been stripped off their right, um, a good percentage of them are black and brown women who are there due to poverty. You know, the issues of, of immigrant folks um, and undocumented folks like who have been traumatized. I know there's a lot to celebrate in terms of where we're at now and who, who have access to voting. And sometimes it's easy to forget um, yeah. those populations and those communities and those groups. This is not even part of their right even though they are here contributing humongously. So I wanted to, this, this poster I'm creating kind of, I'm, I'm hoping to capture a little bit of that. What is, what does the 19th amendment mean to you? That we still have a lot of work to do. <laughs> We've gone far away, but there's still so much work to do. I mean, our history even in this nation, colonial, colonialism and patriarchy that's still very present now is seeing actually how systems are working and how our systems are being directed. And that needs to change. We deserve more. We, we deserve something better. Celebrate each other's differences, but know that we all have so much more similarities. As much work as there is, there's definitely a lot of work on the ground that I've been seeing that is like giving me hope that it's not impossible. Yeah. Um, and that world is possible. And, and I've seen it, I've seen snippets of it in different places. And, and I think essentially that's why I do the work I do because this is the skills I have to be able to share those messages and stories in the platform where folks you might not have understood or might not have heard of are at the very least gonna gonna at least see and acknowledge it and hopefully do their research and hopefully work to, to be involved and to take action so that together um you know the more of us that are there envisioning a better world for everyone to live at you know the closer we, we will get we will get to that place. Thank you.